It is June 9th. I am Dan. Welcome to the kitchen. This is actually going to be the last kitchen session that we do in June. I know, I know. It has been crazy since the whole COVID-19 thing started and we had to shut down youth, like everything got shut down. We had to start isolating. We start the Zoom groups up with our awesome leaders. We start doing the kitchen session. We just start putting out videos, boom, boom, boom. And it's been good, but it's time to wrap it up for a little bit here. So looking ahead to September, we are busy making plans and the goal is for us to actually meet as a youth group. We're still working it all out and what that's going to look like. So the details will be coming out during the summer. So just make sure you keep checking the Northview website. Make sure you keep checking the Instagram. Connect with your leaders. For those of you who are going up to grade nine and gonna be under Pastor Luke's care, that will be awesome. He is great and he's got great small groups. But for you guys who are still in the ministry, we are so excited looking ahead to next year as to what youth is gonna look like and also super excited to see you guys continue to grow in your small groups, develop relationships with your leaders, grow in your knowledge of who God is and who he calls us to be. My daddy said, stay away from Julia! Against all odds, I know we'll be all right this time. Hey Dan, so we're on our way right now to do what you asked us to do, where <laughs> we're doing hopscotch or like an exercise hopscotch. Hoo ha, he, hoo hoo ha. For um the youth girls for our core group. Um, but we're not entirely sure what you asked us to do. So we're just gonna document the whole journey. And wing it. Yeah, <laughs> wing it. And you can do with it whatever you want. Next part of our adventure, Starbucks was closed. I'm very sad. All we wanted was Starbucks. Sad news. We couldn't figure out how to get through this drive through <laughs> So, we're looking for another Starbucks now. <laughs> couldn't find another Starbucks. So we ended up at Wendy's and Tim's. Let's go. <laughs> Strong, independent women. Okay, so we're at our first girl's house and we want to show you what we did for chalk. Do, do, do. See? There we go. All around. There we go. Amazing. 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 Beautiful. Now we'll go get Nasha. Go! to another person's house. I brought my ukulele. 
I've talked about it on my video before that you should go check out. In 500 but, meters, turn left onto the British Columbia 11 ramp to Trans Canada Highway. I only British have to Columbia do that one. because Mary Kate sucks at directions. So. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Anyways, time for a ukulele jam session. Yay! through the <laughs> obstacle course but Myra has to stay here because oh. she can't see it okay here we go Myra's a b-baller yeah. and has a basketball hoop so uh, I love sports. nice hopscotch again and that perfect let's get started two one let's go one Two. <laughs> Fifteen seconds. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I don't. Nine. Oh, hot scotch, hot scotch. Woo! Woo! Well, now. Oh. <laughs> I have a dream. chainsaw carving. I'm going to make a masterpiece out of this uh, nice little stump here. So first I got to start my lovely chainsaw. Her name's Lucy. Say hi to Lucy. We got a nice chainsaw carving here. Uh, it was really hard to carve out these folding leaves. Great little coffee table. Excellent. So here's the thing I want you to understand. As a teacher or speaker, pastor, whatever you want to say, it is actually super easy to put together a lesson, to put together a talk where people hear it and they feel like really good and they get up and they walk out of the room like, oh, that was a really good talk. But that's really not what I'm called to do as a teacher of the gospel and as a teacher of scripture. My job, my goal is actually to take God's word and to present it to you and for the Holy Spirit then to work in your lives, molding you more and more into the image of Christ. And that molding is often right kind of rough work, right? You know, like God's going to do work in your lives and he's going to change your perspective. And like any change, it can be a little bit painful, but it is good, right? So that's why when we talk about the teachings of Jesus, if you were just to read scripture, if you just to read the words of Jesus and you're like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yep, yep, that's me, that's me, that's me. That's really not what we're talking about here. So this scripture is out of the book of Matthew, it's chapter 5, it's verse 1 to 12. We're just going to hit the very beginning of this section here. But this is the Sermon of the Mount. And check out this pic here. And I love this pic. You just see Jesus there and he's just preaching up and the people are just flocking to him to hear his message here. Now this section of scripture is actually entitled the Beatitudes. Okay. Now here's the thing. If you are sitting there and you're like, what the heck is a beatitude? That should actually be your reaction. If you have ever read this section of scripture and you've come across a Sermon on the Mount and then underneath there's a subtitle and it's the Beatitudes and you just kind of go, oh gosh, the Beatitudes. And you've never asked what it meant. Those are the sorts of things, right? When you read scripture is that you actually want to stop. If you don't know what something means, talk to your parents, talk to like someone that has studied a bit. The word beatitude actually comes from a Latin word meaning blessing. And that Latin word blessing, it's more than some superficial happiness. It is a deep 
spiritual joy that transforms your life. So this is how the Sermon on the Mount starts off with here. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and he sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. When Jesus says he's teaching his disciples, what I want you to understand is these beatitudes, these blessings, and we're literally just going to hit one of them today, okay, are meant for Christ followers. These are meant for people who acknowledge that Jesus is God and they desire to follow him. They desire to glorify God. They desire to point others towards God through their life. Okay, so the first beatitude that we're going to hit, and we're literally only going to hit the first one here, and there's eight of them total. Verse 3, it says this, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And what we're going to focus on right there is that blessed is the poor in spirit. And as you read down with those other beatitudes with your leaders tonight, you're going to see, see that each one there's a blessed is, and there's, and there's a statement, and it's a challenging statement. And I don't, want to, I don't want to get beyond this poor in spirit, but you guys will see what I mean, okay? When we hear that word poor in our culture here, we automatically associate it with being like financially poor, not having a lot of possessions. But that word poor doesn't have anything to do with physical possessions. All of the Beatitudes that Jesus speaks about here are to do with an inward condition, are to do with your heart condition. So I wanna to illustrate to you guys what this phrase poor in spirit means. Swimming lessons. When I took swimming lessons, one of the things that you did is you did the lifeguarding. And one of the first things they're gonna teach you is that when you approach someone who is having trouble swimming and they are just going crazy, they're just flailing their arms, the person who is being safe needs to actually surrender to your care. That's what it means being poor in spirit. That's what it means to approach God, is we have to surrender ourselves to his care. We have to surrender ourselves to the grace of Jesus. We have to surrender ourselves to the leading of the Holy Spirit. You have to be aware of your need for Jesus. Don't try to think that you can be just be a super Christian if you just do all the right things, because that's not how it works. We have to be humble. You have to have humility before God. This is the path of a fulfilling life. This is a secret to having a life of purpose and meaning and being able to glorify God through everything you do. This is the message that we want the world to know. So I'm gonna close out this session with a parable from the book of Luke. And we're gonna throw the scripture up at the end of the session, but I'm just gonna describe it to you right now, okay? So it's from the book of Luke, chapter 18, and it's a parable, which is a teaching lesson that Jesus would use. And it is entitled, The Parable of the Tax Collector and the Pharisee. So Jesus is telling this story to some people who just think that they're all that, right? Who people think they're actually thinking that they're super God followers of the time. And so Jesus tells this story to just kind of like bring them down to earth, right? To get their heads and their hearts straight here. So he tells this story here where there are these two individuals that come to pray. The Pharisee basically stands up there and he says, God, thank you for who I am. Thank you so much that I am not like these people around me, especially that tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give you a tenth of all my money. All right. So that's what the religious teacher is. So he's thinking he's all that. He knows scripture and yeah. And then you have the tax collector get up there and this tax collector stands there and he won't even raise his head, but he beats upon his chest and says, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. So Jesus points to that tax collector who literally stands there as being someone who is poor in spirit, who is acknowledging who God is, who is acknowledging his need for God. And Jesus points at that tax collector and he says, that is who you should be. So guys, the past few months have been a crazy time in all of our lives, but it has been an awesome privilege for me as always to be able to come into your homes and to be able to share God's word with you. And as we look forward to September, our goal is to be meeting in some youth group capacity, but we will still be doing our Zoom groups somewhat, okay? Like I said, we're gonna be working that out, but I look so forward to seeing all of you guys soon. So God bless you guys and I'll talk to you later.